Hi guys, it's Diane from Art of Craft. Um, at the end of my last video I told you I was going to show you how to do what I call a shadow resist technique using embossing powders and stamps. Here are the samples um, of a card. I'm actually going to show you on a 12 by 12 layout, but I want to do, um, reacquaint you with these ones again. It's lots of fun, you can make it very pretty, you can make it very bold, and it's nice and simple. I quite enjoy this technique a lot. Here's um, the, the top of 12 that I've done. I'm going to be talking a lot about embossing powders in this video because I love embossing powders. I use them in a lot of projects. Uh, they 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 just do so much for me. I'll show you. A bit, I'll, I'll talk a, a, be a little bit boring some of the properties of the embossing powders because I've had so many questions. I don't profess to be an expert on them. I just know what I know and I just know how I use them. I like using them in the 12 by 12s I like putting photos into fantasy scenes. That's fun for me. But it's only one of many, many, many techniques that you can do with embossing powders and stamping. There are so many. I, I could be here for hours. If you have a look at this particular one, I've used embossing techniques down here. In behind it, I'm not sure you can pick it up on on camera. I'll take it you in a little closer. But there's stamping in the background here as well that I've used to enhance little Nina, my granddaughter's um, area around her head to enhance the picture. It's visible in person. I'm not sure whether you can catch the reflect back there. I've used one of Tim Holtz's stamps to do that. And use your stamps to create these effects in behind um, there, the photo, so you can, I've used this one here out of his Ultimate Grunge, this cracked effect, in, in behind here. And embossed it clear and just run colour over the top, the distressings over the top, and it gives really cool effect back there. I'll be using, you'll see me later on using um, this particular stamp in here. It's actually in here. Uh, this is from his Tim Holtz Nature's Discovery set. It's a favourite of mine. My stamps all look pretty manky because I like to uh, use them and I don't clean them very often because I'm too busy stamping to be doing that. Um, I've also used over the top of the uh, some details out of uh, one of the Crafty Secret stamp sets, Wildflowers I think it is, because they're, they're, they're gorgeous and these these stamps here, the dragonfly and the little thistles in the air and the tops of the thistles that you see around on the picture, they actually come out of this Crafty Secret set, fabulous stamps, but use what you've got, um, I'm sure you've got lots of different st stamps on hand, those are just my favourites that I like to use. Also, if you just by the by, this little outfit that Nina's wearing has actually been dyed with um, Adirondack colour wash and has been knitted up for her. I have another layout here where I've used this exact same picture, uh, and you can see how different they can appear when you do them with different colours. This also has a lot of embossing. Um, in it. Not using the shadow technique, using a different technique uh, where I've used my favourite stamp which is just a texture stamp from one of Tim Holtz's sets. I use this in just about all stamping I do. Uh, here we go, let me find it. It's this one. And it comes from uh, Urban Tapestry texture and you can see I've actually uh, stamped it, embossed it with metallic embossing powders to create texture in behind and all this here which is one of your dusty attic chippies, gorgeous they are, I have also embossed different colours onto that to create this, I'll take it a bit further, to create this effect around the edge here and then mixed in there you can see some iron roses butterflies, um, the, the dusty attic, this again is some of the dusty attic, uh, laser cut chippies, Tim Holst, 
tattered leaves dye that I have coloured up with distress inks and crackle paint and and just create a fun fun layout. Easy, it's a very simple layout and it's a great one to teach in class. You get great great response to it and people can see all the fun things you can do with embossing powders. And you can see I haven't just stamped on the background, I have bought that stamping over the top and scattered it on the pictures to give it a continuity. Stuck it down, use my distress it all around the edges, use um, embossing powders and paints around the edges and it's a fun, fun layout. Let's talk a little bit about embossing powders. There are so many different embossing powders out there in different makes. Use what you have got. Your clear embossing powders, there's interference of embossing powders, there are so many different makes, um, I like ranges embossing powders, this is the one from the Adirondack range which come in the same colours as all their ink pads. There's Lindy Stamp Gang which are absolutely gorgeous, they've got that mica effect, that two-tone glorious um, shimmery effect, I quite like those. I love the Distress and Tim Holtz Distress Powders. They're a favourite of mine. I like the texture they give. Now, they're not a shiny one. They don't give you that really um, bold impact, but they are fun, and I'll show you a few things about them. Then you have your embossing pearls, and um, just so many. There's just so many different ones, and, it, and it's confusing. So look at what you've got, and use what you've got, and don't forget you can combine the colours on them. For instance, this is a Distress Powder here. And on these two samples here, I've used Distress Embossing Powders. They give a nice rough effect and it adds texture to your project and that's, that can be a lot of fun. So you can um, create this fun effect that's dimensional, but it's also two-tone. I've used several colours in there to create that. Uh, and I'm a very touchy-feely person, so I'm going to love something like that. And that's using your Distress Powders. This is another one using Distress Powders, but I've actually bought in a little bit of the Lindy Stamp Gang, probably this colour box things in there, where I've created a distressed effect down here to simulate sand and desert, and then brought a little shimmer in here, and again I created a shimmer up here using um, embossing powders. And um, it looks like I've got a little bit of stickles up there as well. So you can do lots of things. That's using the Distress powders. You can also, one thing that people forget is that uh, Tim Holtz, all Tim Holtz inks are actually embossing inks. So that if you stamp his any of his ink colours like this, which I have done on this particular one, so I've stamped it in the colour, and you run your clear embossing powder over the top, it will bring it up beautifully. Now look at the detail in there. A lot of people think distress, it's got to be smudged, it's got to be mooched around, and it does all those things, but it embosses beautifully. There's great detail in there. And that's that particular stamp has been stamped with sage mahogany, and I've just sh shaken my super fine powder over the top. You can just use ordinary powder, a clear powder, and the colour comes through. Marvellous. It's another one I've done that way. And there's embossing all back here where I have stamped a stamp and just used the colour of the manila um, to to bring this pattern in because that's just the manila card in behind and then I've brought colours over the top. And there's fun effects that you can get with your stamp um, with your embossing techniques. Tim Holtz has these on his blog where you create all these different um, textures and and just flick off a lot of the powder. And I can show you those on other videos, but he has got some videos showing those techniques on here. Um, so check it out if you haven't. I'm sure you have because he's such a great artist. Here's another one using his Distress inks as... Um, as the actual stamp pad and here I've created this background um, using his inks and just bringing the clear powder over the top. Lots of ways you can use them. For 
the powders themselves. Now, the one I, one I will explain to you is the interference colours. A lot of people get confused about the interference colours. We're going to look at these two here. Because these two are actually stamped with exactly the same um, powder. They have been, it's been sprinkled on. And I've used, that's the interference violet. You can see when you stamp your embossing ink onto black and you put this powder over the top and you heat it, you're going to get this beautiful violet colour. If you do it on white, you might look at that and say that's very bland, don't like that. But it's actually fabulous for wedding invitations. I don't know that you can pick it up on there, but it actually reflects the violet in in behind that creamy colour. And it's absolutely gorgeous. You can get some fun effects with it using it on white. And of course every shade of paper will give you a slightly different reflex. Um, and that's fun. That's why you use the uh, interference colours. You can never be sure what you can get. On this sample here, there's many. This is a two-toned Lindy's stamp game one. This is a two-tone from the Antiquities range, from Ranger. And they're fun as well. Another Antiquities one. There's all these. And of course, everybody usually in their stash has a clear. Sometimes they have a black. But most of the time, they have the metallics. Um, the coppers, the golds, um, the silvers. But the colours can be so beautiful absolutely beautiful colours that you can get out of these and again combine them uh, if you haven't got the colour you want sprinkle a little out of each one and create the colour you want that can be a lot of fun uh, so try try that okay then we get to the different pads you can get now you might have a Sukuneko one you might there's so many different types of embossing inks I, my preference are the Ranger ones and Tim Holtz Distress Embossing and I use the embosser pad and the clear. We can use the you can even use the uh, the more waxy perfect pearl uh, medium. Uh, it's it's kind of a different texture but it, it, it does it as well. Use what you've got again. I find that people's results actually vary even from climate to climate. I don't know why but this is my preference in, in our climate and I have it also in a big big format and I have it in a black format and I have really clean pads, I have dirty pads so I usually keep a few um, going because I, I tend to be a bit mucky sometimes. Beauty is another embossing powder, you can see it's quite a thick grain, it's not like the other embossing powders and I use it a lot to make embellishments as well as uh, create effects with my stamping. You can, that's why I've got this huge container. It comes in colours and metallics and that's a subject of another video because that, that, that using your melting pot and using beauty is, is just a, a huge fun subject. But I also use it just as an embossing powder. Uh, you can see that here on this particular card where the clock in the background has, I've used beauty on it and it gives a nice thick effect on top of the clock face. Uh, lots of fun and I've also used some of the colours in this particular one where I've put a clear piece over the stamp but I've done a bit of dripping and a bit of creating back here on the top of this tag with beauty. There's, there's lots of colours and you can custom mix your colours. These are dyes that are stable uh, in UT, so you can create colours uh, of your own with with that particular colour range again from Ranger. I'm going to show you how to do this shadow technique back here. A lot of people also say to me, uh, "I haven't got the stamps you got. I can't create." Use what you've got. There, are, because you will have stamps that will create this. And if you haven't, get yourself out a brush. Get you an emboss embossing ink re-inker and just splash it on there with your brushes if, to create your sky. You don't have to have stamps. I just love using stamps. My stamps are very old so I've got some old ones, I've got some new ones. This one for instance is a very old one where I've actually used it in the background of this one. Uh, this is the stamping up one that I've used in the background of this one. Um, I'll often use my favourite one of Tim Holtz. 
from from out of the um, urban tapestry set. Um, I also like using the stampscape stamps. I've got just although these have been around for a long time, but I've only um, got these recently, and I love using those um, to create my seeds. Okay. When you're creating your project, just grab yourself a piece of paper. This is a piece of basic bright grey paper where you can see I've started to create my clouds on the background. Um, I've done a little, um, this doesn't look anything much, but it's actually going to become a sun in there when I ink over the top. And this is a piece of Tim Hulse paper from his Christmas paper stash. Um, I like the model background and it was a similar one. I think this was a piece of Tim Hulse paper too that I started, yeah it was, that I started to create this on. And you can see how it's changed, how I've um, created the scene in a different way. So you can also just get yourself a piece of card and use your lighter uh, distress inks over the top and flick it and create a muted effect for the background if you so wish. But you will have paper in your stash that you can use. Is you don't have to rush out and get the same paper that I use. Just use what you've got and start to um, create your scene on top of it. Now I always like to put my scenes down onto some chipboard and I have like this one you can see where I have um, I've used the distress it all around the edges and created a, a frame for it. You can do that or leave it straight or there's just a million and one methods you can use to create the edges. You can rip them, you can tear them, just do whatever you like. I'm going to create the clouds on the top of this layout. Now what I like to do, especially if I'm going to be using a square stamp like this, is I like to tear a piece of paper so that when I stamp my embossing ink down that I'm going to put the embossing powder on I don't get a square straight mark but I also will use my other stamps in there if I do just to, to make it go away so you, you won't be able to see much as I'm doing this so I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be stamping it into my embossing ink stamping it down putting my embossing powder over the top and in this case I'm actually using a clear snap white it's kind of an off-white which goes nice on this paper and uh, sprinkling that over the top and then heat setting it with the heat gun and there's lots of heat guns out there then these this particular one makes a lot of noise so we won't be showing you that um, a trick with it though is is before you st so you don't blow away your powder is when you start it up stir it up and get it hot before you start going over your paper now I'm not going to show you actually how to emboss as such because there are lots of videos out there going through the techniques if you want me to I will but it's basically heating this powder putting a glue pad on putting the pattern on putting the powder at the top heating the powder uh, until it melts into your work so you can see the um, and it acts as a resist for anything that you put over the top in other words that if I bring ink over the top of this it will not cover that embossing because the embossing is it's like a plastic, it's like a, um, yeah, it is plastic, basically plastic I think, um, and it, it, it the dyeing just wipe up the top, off the top. Now when I'm stamping later, I'll actually have to stamp, because I'm going to put my embossing on down the bottom here as well, and I'll show you a little bit of that, but you won't see much, because I'll be embossing it clear. When I create the detail over the top, um, I will have to stamp with archival ink so if I want the images to go on over top of the embossing because archival ink will sit on top of the paper all your distress inks and your dye inks will go in behind so they'll appear in behind the images and these light ones that you see here that's just clear embossing powder over top of the stamped image and therefore what you're seeing reflected through is actually the colour of the paper below which is a sort of a pale greeny white colour. You can 
see that this isn't traditional stamping. Most of you will be familiar with the blocks or um, the stamps like these which have a cushion backing on them that you stick to your blocks. I, I, I use those as well but I sometimes like to just stamp like this. I see nothing wrong with doing it just this way because this is a, a more of a, a random type stamping as opposed to precise. Okay, that'll do for me. Do me for now while I stamp the bottom. Now you won't see very much when I'm doing this because I'm going to be stamping it so that it comes out clear. This piece of paper has actually got a mark in here but I'll just blend it into the picture later. All I'm going to be doing is stamping in the clear. You might see um, shadows on this a little. I'm not too worried about that because my stamp is particularly clean. If you want a pristine effect or you want the exact colour to come through from underneath, well, you're going to have to clean your stamp. Okay, on both my images, I have, on both my 12 by 12 layouts, I have created a cloud seen in the background and I have stamped with my clear embossing ink on top of the paper and I put clear embossing powder over the top and heat sealed it on and this is just to create a resist for my ink to go over the top later I'm going to create the detail with my stamps and using probably archival the range of archival ink on top or whatever colour I fancy off the stamp because you don't want that um, distress ink um, embossing and clinging to that and making it all greasy and I'm going to use some um, pale ochre in the archival ink to create a shadow using the same stamp to get some detail in. Now when you're looking at this it, it might look a bit of a mess you can see dark bits and you think oh that looks terrible but it, it'll all come out in the wash as you start to stamp start to add details in there and of course you can do this and you can see there's a little there's a mistake here too obviously I've got some embossing powder and stuck my finger in it or something but that'll also fix up along the line now the archival ink remember will stamp over the embossing powder and um, create it will sit on top where your any of your distressings if I stamp those over the top they will just sit in behind the images because it'll just wipe off where you've embossed. Now I like quite busy when it comes to flowers and to scenes but you can have them very precise you don't have to have them all busy like I like them.
stamps from the Crafty Secrets range and sometimes they get a little bit away from you and they're so tiny, the little thistle heads um, that float in the, in the breeze that you need something stable to put them on. Um, I've made, used tack and peel and what it does is you it, this tack and peel you put on one of your blocks and it stays there permanently and it has a cover over it and it makes the surface in here is extremely tacky so you can attach your little stamps to it um, and or ones that you haven't got on clean cushion and stamp them quite easily and when you finish stamping you just put this back to use for next time.